Welcome. In this video, we're going to be covering some of the techniques that will help you build out your character to do a 360 turn. So I've imported my artwork into Harmony, and one of the first things that I want to do with my artwork is to scale it up and reposition it. I'm also going to turn on my center guide here so that I can see where the center is when I'm lining things up because as I move through the different views I will want to be maintaining that center position for my views to assist with rotation. So first I will just add a peg onto my drawing so that I can scale it to a view that makes me a little bit happier. So with that uh, we can just keyframe this up. So I'll zoom out a little bit. As always, hold shift while you are scaling. And I'm going to just position my character so that it's closer to full size. And then move it over. And I'm going to just set Decrease of the groin area as my center so that now sets my character and what I can do right now is just lock that so it's locked for the beginning. Moving into my artwork, one of the things that I will need, I'll need my outline color as I'm working with that and my character has a black outline color so that's going to be easy enough to work with so I will leave my black but it wouldn't be a bad idea in case I do want to change it to make a new color and this time just I'll just call this my lines layer and I want to make one more color and this is going to be for my uh, joint pivot colors on it so I'm going to be choosing a color that is really bright and really easy to see often uh, just a really really bright pink is my preferred color because it glows while we're setting up these pivot point circles on it so we'll just call that pivots for right now so now we have that really really bright color so I have a drawing layer, and there's a couple of things that uh, we can work with on doing this. We can put all of our preliminary joint alignment circles all on one layer, and then copy paste that to the appropriate limb while we're working on it. Um, another way is that we can position it inside our outline layer, so we can configure it that way as well. So that would be another option that we could work with. So right now I'm just going to work on my line art layer and if you haven't turned on uh, your additional art layers you can do that in your Harmony preferences. So on this I'm just going to rename this. This is going to be where I will align my pivots for it. So if I choose my drawing layer I want to look at my pen. So if I draw a line, we switch to our contour editor and zoom in and click on it. We'll see that we get a lot of points. Okay, so that's a little hard to see. Let's switch our line to black. And now if I grab the contour editor, we can see that it put a lot of points. And, you know, that's not the end of the world. So if I am drawing a line, let's just go grab the pencil tool again and I draw Let's switch it back to black so we can see those points. The orange doesn't show up really well. But if I have any movement in my line as I draw, we can see we can get a lot of points. And the problem that will happen when we do that is when we add in deformers to help do our pivots, to do our animation and things like that, a lot of excess points, we start to get weird things that start happening. So we don't want to do that. So what I would recommend is we use the line tool. Switch my size a little bit smaller. And now when I draw with the line tool, we want to set a couple settings on this one. I want to turn on snapping. And if we use line builder, 
small strokes will be merged into one and then we have three options here and we'll take a look at those so if I do small strokes it starts to, if I have a gap, it doesn't close it, but we can see the first, it closed that gap. Now if I go here, we can see that I have fewer points, so that's going to work a little bit better. Now, these other options that we have here, the snapping is really good because when I start at an edge, we can see how it snapped it to that line. So I, when I do that, we now end up with lines that are connected so that we're able to work with them a little bit better and then we do need to flatten our artwork as we go. We have our flatten option over here where it will flatten everything into single objects, but we'll get into that. But beyond the line builder we have the straight line. If I draw a straight line and then when I get to the end and hold down control on Windows, command on a Mac, we can adjust the curvature. If I grab the curve line, it draws a straight line, and when I let go, I don't have to press the modifier key, and I can adjust it to whatever shape I want, and then click to create that bend. Now, if I need to create a complex bend, I can go into, I have my contour editor, I can select my line, and if I hold down Control on Windows, Command on a Mac, and click, I can insert additional points. Now I can click on that point and adjust where that curvature is. Click and again move the handle around. So we have options while we're working to use a minimal number of points instead of having too many points. So snapping is going to be really useful because what we're first going to draw is we're going to draw all of our pivots with the ellipse tool. Well, actually, first let's just get rid of the junk here. We don't need that. I can grab my ellipse tool and I can draw pivots where I want them to be. Now, what I'm trying to do is draw a perfect circle to allow us to have our round joints. If I hold down shift while I draw, then it aligns it and then that gets it configured pretty close. If I want to adjust that, I can then select it and scale it. But again, when I'm scaling, I need to hold down Shift. If I hold down Alt or Option, we'll see how that now scales it from its center. So then I can decide, holding Shift down the entire time I'm doing this, and what I'm trying to do is to align my lines up with where I see didn't want to rotate it, wanted to slide it over. And when we get to the point of you're really trying to be a little bit more precise with your alignment, zooming in and using the arrow keys can be really beneficial. But what we're really going to be trying to do here with these pivots is not just create the round line for the joints, but we're also going to take the circle that I've drawn going to copy it and I'm going to paste it. When I paste it, it pastes it over and down 10 pixels each time. So the easy way to adjust that is hold down shift and I hit the up arrow, shift and I hit the left arrow and now it's in perfect alignment. And now what I'm going to do is zoom in and I'm going to start scaling it holding down alt or option and the shift key and I'm going to make it really, 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 really tiny. And now that gives me a center point and if that one even has a smaller size to it, it gives us a place when we're setting our pivot point, when we attach our pegs, and then we go to configure that pivot point. Let's just zoom out so we can see it. We'll be able to zoom in and set that pivot point in the middle of that circle and we know that it will be then rotating around that middle. So this is why we want to make that circle really really small so that we can zoom way in and align this precisely and then that gives us the best control of what we're doing. Just There, put it back to normal. So that gives me the first circle for that layer. Now, chances are once I have one of these, 
aligned, what I can do is select it. So now I circle around, select both of it, both both of it, both circles. And if I drag and then hold down Option or Alt, it is now going to create a copy. And I'm trying to align these approximately you know, where I need or want that knee to bend. So that now lines up the knees. We can grab both of these and I'll drag this up for the hips. And now I can hold down shift and scale these up a little bit. And I'm trying to position it. Now I can see I got a little too big, so we'll scale it down just a little bit more. And again, using the arrow keys can be super useful for aligning things. And it looks like that got me pretty darn close. Just zooming in to create my alignments. It looks like this leg will want to go a little smaller with it. Again, so hold Option or Alt and the Shift key. Scale it from the middle. Reposition. That sets that up pretty good there. And we'll repeat once more for the ankles. So definitely going to have to shrink this down a little bit. So hold down shift and scale them. And we're just trying to align this at the position or place where I think I want my foot to bend. And then this will give me that alignment. And by having this really arranged on a separate layer, one thing that's useful when I'm doing this is it gives me, I can keep going back to it. I can turn that layer off when I'm not working with it. So when I know I don't need to see it, I can turn it off. And when I need access to it, turn it back on, copy the circles that I need, paste those onto my drawing layer and use those as a start. So now I've created parts that I need. And because this is not a symmetrical character for the arm, because the arm is virtually identical except for the bracer. I could use a cloned arm, but the legs are always going to be a little bit different with the feet. So there's this kind of just asymmetry that's happening with the character and a lot of the posing. So it doesn't have a symmetrical pose for the front three quarter or back view. It's only the side view where we would be having an identical. So it doesn't really make sense to use a cloned leg, but we could if we wanted. Oh, shoot. Just realized I must have missed holding Alt when I grabbed the ankles. Scale these up a little bit. Let's try again, see if that. Not trying to rotate it, just trying to select it. And we'll shrink it just a hair. Just zooming out so I can see 
about where I want that knee to be. Uh, that's about where I want it to be, and pull it in a little bit more, a little bigger. Repeat that process for this leg. So I'm just trying to align the parts. So this now gives me circles that I can use for ankles, knees, thigh, and hip. So that sets up all of those pivot points that I need. So that will be perfect for that. And if you're wondering why my lines looked blue is I press the letter K on the keyboard, which then shows me the path. So if I zoom in, if I press K, you can see where it puts that blue line inside. So it shows me the actual path perimeter of that shape. If I push K, that goes away. So now with that set, what we can do is start adding in some artwork layers here. So there's lots of uh, naming conventions and depending on which way I'm rotating the character for what is front and back legs. So especially if we're using flipped artwork, we always are maintaining a front leg and a back leg and just deforming and flipping appropriately. If I'm going to have all um, separate views and no flips going on, then I can even do it as left leg, right leg. So we'll just go left underscore leg upper left underscore leg lower left underscore foot. Now this character ultimately is going to need both um, a boot layer. So the if I have bare feet that would be another layer but if I assume that the character is always going to have boots so I'm going to need a left foot and I'm going to need a left boot for the part that goes on to the lower leg as part of it. Or at least for the upper boot part of it, we'll need that. We're going to have to do some configuring to figure out how to get that stripe to behave best. Um, but right now I'll just set it up with a basic foot, and then left. Oh, I'll just put a layer for it. left boot upper and then I'll put in my hips layer and we'll add and close. So that now is giving us some basic options to work with here so we can start creating some artwork that goes with it. So starting on I'm going to start with the upper leg. So with going into my pivots layer first, what I'm going to do is go and copy. I only need the circles. I don't need the centers because those will be visuals that will show up on the pivots as we work with that. So I've selected those, copy it, go to my upper leg. Now when I paste onto a separate layer, a a drawing layer or an art layer, then at that point it does not uh, do the shift, so it pasted it in position. So now that I've done that, I can select that and I'm going to switch the color of it to my lines. So don't need those pivot dots copied, so we'll delete those. 
Now for creating the line, once again, I'm going to switch back to my line tool and let's go over and do my line tool settings. So I have the curve mode on, line builder, so I'll close my gaps and snapping set to snap to contour. The reason I want snap to contour is now I can start, oh, let's undo that, switch our color to lines there, try again is now it snapped it to that contour and now we can see how I get close and it snaps it in place. So once I get here I can let go and then create kind of the bend shape that I want for the thigh. So I want it to go out and I'm going to add another point back in the middle so I'll click here click on my contour editor I'll hold down Control or Command, click to insert a point, and now that point. We can move that over. And sometimes, you know, in lieu of turning on and off snapping. So right now we have snapped a contour line there. And these handles, when we work with the handles, we want our handles to be approximately one third the length of the segment that they are affecting. So I don't want real long handles that are the full length of the segment. We should have about one third for each handle and then a center part that's unaffected by it. So if I look here, this handle is longer on this side, reflecting a little bit of that contour. This one's a little bit shorter, but we can pull it out and balance it appropriately. Now let's go back into my line tool, go back here, drag and it'll snap can let go and now put a little bit of the bend in here and I may decide I want to add if I want to add a little subtlety to it I can go once again hold down command or control and I can cl click on the line insert that point and now shift that point over just a little bit so it creates that little kind of curving or S bend with my path. Now I don't like that angle quite right. I want to adjust a little bit more. So this gets the base part of my line set. Then what we can do is I can now click on segments here. And what I don't want to do is be using the selection tool, because we can see it selects the whole circle, we're just trying to get part of it here. So now I can click here, hit delete, click, delete, delete. And now if we zoom way in, we can see how because I had snapping turned on, things are joint. Now if this is creating a little bit of a pucker that I don't like, I can pull that handle out. So we're getting a more aesthetic, clean curve. Now I have fewer points going on here with this, which is going to be really useful when it comes time to put in a deformer and work with our line. Now I can see I have that one extra point there I don't need. So zooming in, checking your points is going to be really beneficial. And that now gives me my first body contour that I am working with here. And it's set up and ready to go. It's on the line art layer. And the final thing I'll want to do, because if I grab the select tool, and we'll see that these are now separate pieces. So what I want to do is to select everything. So we can Command or Control A, or just drag and select. If I choose flatten there, and now when I click on it, or sorry, not just, so we select our artwork and merge pencil lines. There we go. So now when I select, it's just one shape. So now we can see we have one shape. I can't click. If I click anywhere, it's just selecting the one shape. So now we're done with the upper leg. Lower leg is going to be the same kind of process. So continuing onward, we're going to work on the lower leg. So first I'm going to jump over to pivots and I will select the top circle. I'm going to select the bottom circle, copy those, and then go to the lower leg layer. 
and you make sure I'm on the line art and I will paste that in and we'll change their color to black. So that's now position those in place for me. I can go grab my line. Make sure my line is set to using lines. And now we can just verify once more. We got snapping, line builder, and curve. So it will automatically, and you can see how it's showing me where it's snapping that line in. And now I'm going to bring, so I could focus on the curve up here, but I'm going to do the bottom curve down here. Switch to the line tool. And now add an extra point. Now with this point going out, we'll adjust that curve there. You can click here to pull this point in. And sometimes when we're doing these adjustments, if I turn off snapping, it can make it a little bit easier to align what we are trying to set up. But now I can pull that line out. It looks like maybe move this point over just a little bit and straighten that up. And that is getting it pretty darn close to what we need. For the curvature. Now if I decide that okay I accidentally added another point but that's a, going to make it a little bit easier I think to build out the shape that I want. And that looks pretty good there. Back to my line tool. And I did not mean for that space to happen, but instead was trying to set this up. So now we'll start out with the line. Oh, and because I turned off snapping, it turned it off now. Snapping's back on. Not entirely happy with where that started, but that will give me a little bit. Switch to my line tool. It does seem that not line tool, my uh, contour editor, that adding in two extra points is giving me a little bit better control of my curve with it. So I'll just pull that out. This is again where sometimes we do have to pull off snapping. And I am going to adjust this line with snapping turned on, but I want to attach it a little higher. So I'm moving that up. Now I can do a little deleting of points or segments that I don't need. Cleaning this up. And that now configures that. So we can select everything on this layer and merge it into one shape. So now I have two of my three parts for my leg configured so that I can start working with it. So we'll go and work the third one where I'm going to need that circle. 
So we go back into pivots and just select the circle, copy, and I will go to the foot, paste, change its color to lines, go grab my line tool, turn snapping back on. Okay, now snapping is on. And now I'm going to build out. the foot. And because we have boots and not sh uh, individual toes, that does make this a little bit easier to try and configure it. And if we set it up where we're just using our base segments right away, that works out pretty well. Now what I could do is go ahead uh, well, I guess first I need to delete a few of these segments so I can add a little bit of detail on the shoe. Oh. So what we might want to do is that all selected here select all of it and merge it. So now when I go grab that point, all right, so what we have going on is that other point. Snapped it on, so now I can delete it. So the point was very close, but it didn't apparently snap in, which is why when I tried to delete, it did not work. And with that, I can go through and we'll add a little bit more detail. I think I'll start around with the sole into the heel section a little bit. And you will see that the higher the quality of the artwork or more resolution you have, the easier it is to be accurate or faithful to your model. And this because it's a little bit lower res. It's not 100% in terms of exactly where are those lines and line breaks. The next thing that we want to do is to add in some colors so that we're able to start coloring this and then start building out our node configuration. We'll figure out how to handle the stripe on the boot. Um, one thing that I am going to do is I am going to add in the lower leg. We're gonna add in one more line on the lower leg. Let's just get this down to our size that we want. Choose the line color on the lower leg. And what I'm going to do is Oh, and let's just make sure we've got snapping, we've got our line on. I just want to draw this line across. So this will allow me to have a general boot color down here because we're gonna put this stripe, instead of doing the boot as a whole separate element, we'll just put this stripe on a separate layer and we'll use a deformer so we'll learn how to incorporate some deformers into this to create the curvature, whether we want it to be curving down or curving up depending on the leg position. But the next thing I want to do is to go and create some colors based on the colors in my image. So with that, we'll just click on plus. 
Double click here. And we'll move this window over so I can see the plus, I can see what I'm trying to do. And first we'll just call this pants. And I can just drag the eyedropper over and it selects my pants color. Click on plus. This time this will be my boot color. So this will be in the main boot color. We'll go grab that pinkish tone. Add another color in here. The heel is a darker color. So this will be boot heel. And we'll drag this over. We also are noticing this line on the heel as it overlaps with the lower leg is gonna give us some issues. So we're gonna to have to look at how we can separate that using an overlay layer because otherwise when we use our auto patch to blend in the joint, that heel line is going through where that circle is. So that will give us a little bit of difficulty. So we will have to solve that. But these are the fun problems that we can work with. And then this will be our boot sole. I'll go grab that dark gray. And another color. This is going to be my boot stripe. And we'll use the same color for the stripe as well as the toe of the boot. So we'll just drag this out and grab that kind of, it's a light grayish color that we can see happening there. So that now gives us, it's not white, but it's a color. Now, sometimes instead of using this longer list where I have to scroll through when I have all this space at the side, what I like to do is switch in my color view and switch it over to a swatch mode so I can see the colors this way, then I can see more colors at a given time. I find that makes my life quite a bit easier while I am working. Now what we want to do is we want to start adding in our shapes so that we can fill with colors here. And it's surprisingly, there's some nice ways of going about doing it. So if I just select my upper leg, I can even zoom out here a little bit. I don't have to highlight it and select it. As long as this layer is active, I can, in my palette up here, I have this create color art from line art. So if I click on that button, and if I even switch to the drawing view, we're on line art, I switch over to color art, we can see there is now a path existing there. So now I can go grab my paint bucket tool, and I can click on the pants color and click and fill that in. Now if I go to the lower leg, and go to the line art on the lower leg and again create line art from color art. We'll just do this for all the layers real quick. So that gives me my foot, my lower leg and my upper leg. As long as we have the foot active, we'll switch over to this view here. And now I know that the boot stripe color is going to go up there. The boot sole is going to go up there. The boot heel will be here and the main boot color will exist there. Switch over to our lower leg. We have the main boot color existing here and our pants color existing there. Going back to the camera view. And if we switch to our transform tool, click off. We'll see that we have it all appearing except for the stripe. Now, I'm going to turn off the lower leg and the foot so I can see what's there. One thing about, and we'll turn off the pivots. I don't need to see the circles either. When I look at this, we're going to simplify ours right now. We'll build in extra things like, well, like the crease at the knee. Um, we might have a, you know, a crease for the boot behind the knee. So we have this cr these creases that we're going to be able to move and pull forward and back on our artwork and modify their shape. But we're going to just set this up as a two part. So when the foot moves, this moves with the lower, with the foot and the part up here is gonna move with the uh, leg so that they blend appropriately. And I don't just put the stripe in the boot artwork itself because as we do our turnaround, we're going to need to be able to move that stripe across the leg and the foot without having to redraw it. So that's why we're going to separate it into two pieces here. So I'm going to just rename this boot upper and we'll just call upper stripe. And then we'll just add in one more drawing layer. Um, oh, um, 
So the error message was because I have a different version where I was doing some tests where it's still just named boot upper stripe. But now we'll just go left boot boot uh, foot stripe. Add and close. So the two stripes as we work with them, I'll go grab my line. Line's at 3.5. It's configured how I want it to be right now. And we'll have the upper stripe and the lower stripe. Now when I do the upper stripe, I'm going to make it big enough. So I'm going to just pull across like this. And then I'll pull down, pull over, I'm going to pull down, and I'll pull down, across, and over. So with these lines, I'm going to adjust it. I want it to be straight, and then we'll add in curvature using the deformer on it. And I'm even going to add in two more lines here, and what we'll look at when we use there, sorry, I move that over. Grab our contour editor. I click on this point. We can hold down Alter Option and drag, and it now becomes a curved point. So I can adjust the curvature of that point and then we will be able to modify that curvature with our deformer. Now pull that point up, pull this point down because I want this to essentially be kind of a T that then our deformer we will adjust the shape of that and I don't think I need to go quite that wide as part of it. That's going to be more than big enough. So now if we go, oh, and I drew this on the color art layer. So let me just grab this, cut, go to my line art, paste. So now it's in the correct place. Uh, when we start doing line art, color art, and things like that, it's really quite common that you will find you accidentally end up on the wrong layer. So now I can draw out and we can see my snap is working. I'm going to do it in the same manner. Grab my contour editor, click on this point, hold down Alter Option, and drag. And it looks like I ended up with one extra point while I was drawing that I didn't want. So I will just click on that point and hit delete and it goes away. Now sometimes, well, again, while we're working this, snapping is problematic, so I just turn it off. So I can adjust the shape that I am looking for. So now that gives me my line art. I can now take my line art, transfer it to my color art. We'll go down a layer, create our color art, grab our paint bucket, grab the boot stripe, and now go on the color art layer, fill, go to the bootstripe, we're in color, fill, so now we've filled it in. So now I've created all of my artwork layers that I am going to need. We'll set our pivots after we have built our node structure. So I've created my base leg structure and we're ready to start connecting this together. So before we get so carried away that we create tons and tons of art layers and get it all built up, what I would like to do is to now take a break from creating more artwork and then start going into how we can start building out our nodes with this. And then once we get the leg connected, we'll add in the little crease for the knee. So we'll see how we can add that in as well. Then we will return to adding in more things, looking at asymmetrical parts, etc. So switching to our node view, we will see that our node view is a little bit ugly right now. 
and we're going to want to clean that up. Along the way, we'll cover some efficiencies with working with our nodes. Because we've named our layers in such a way we know what they are, we don't have to look at our other views, but we can use the full screen command. So control F twice, control F once, makes the application go full screen. And as long as our node window is the active window, the red box is around it, I hit full screen again, and now it takes over my entire view. So now I can start arranging this. So to undo the initial cluster, I'm just gonna click at the bottom, and then we have an option called order up. And I'll just hit okay, and now that orders it up so we can see what's going on. So I'll first start out and grab my primary composite and my right display and move those to the bottom of the screen. And pivots and my reference are all down at the bottom or at the right side, so we'll pull those down and over as well. So now we have our artwork. Now I do know I wanna put the hips on the other side because I want to, and the bootstripe we'll have on top because remember what's on top is left, what's on the bottom is to the right. Then we'll go foot, lower leg, upper leg, and hips. Now to arrange these out, we have order horizontally, and that can move things horizontally and slide those over. The next thing that I want to do is just use my cable cutter and slash all of that so it's no longer connected. Turn that off. Now it's time to go grab some nodes. So the nodes that we're going to initially want, I'm going to want an overlay node. And I had something selected when I created it, so it now, if you Alt-Drag out, it deselects it. There we go. And so now nothing is highlighted. So now this time if I go Line Art, and then I will choose Color Art, and then Underlay Layer, Auto Patch, and we're going to need some cutters. So I'll just grab the cutter node and we're going to need some composites. So I will grab that. And from that, we're going to be able to start connecting our different parts together. So what we do want to do with that, and just to make this easier, once again, I'll just say, we'll go horizontal. And now I'm going to rename these because we're gonna need more screen real estate. So that becomes my overlay layer. Close, cutter, we'll leave. Line art on here will just be LA. And then auto patch will become AP. Color art becomes CA. Underlay, of course. UL, and then our composite, I'm just gonna shorten to comp. Now, the nice part about composites is they will grow. The more things you put or connect into them, the bigger they automatically become horizontally. But now we have our different parts. Now, the typical order that we'll want to lay these out will be like this, and then we will be having a group of these. So I'll just order this over so it's nice and easy. I'm just going to tighten them up a little bit because now we're going to make a bunch of copies because each one of our layers, not every layer needs all of these. Some are only going to need a few of them, but it's nice to have this as a group so I'm just going to put this up here, copy and I'll paste it. So now I know I need a bunch of these layers for the foot. And then we can paste it again. And we'll need a bunch for the lower leg. We'll need a bunch for the upper leg. So the hips, because we didn't make any artwork yet, we're just gonna leave that off to the side over there. And now we have lower leg, upper leg, foot. And now our stripes, as we align those, what we're gonna need with those, we'll need a line art, 
in an auto patch and color art to connect those. Um, you may end up using an overlay layer, so you could put that in later for the crease, but we're not going to worry too much about that right now. And along the way, we'll need a bunch of cutters and comps, and we'll figure that out as we go. So I just, it's nice to have things neat. Now a quick way to connect, I select that hold down alt or option and then connect the pieces so I don't have to drag. I find dragging to be a less efficient way of working. But we're going to just proactively put a overlay and underlay layer for each of these just because whoop, we may end up needing them and then that way we know it's connected already. So we may not connect all of those out to their individual comps. So there's a couple of different ways that you can go about kind of creating these. Um, so typically though, we're going to have a comp so you one, two, three, four, four, three, two, and one. So we end up having a comp for each of these as we connect them in. And then when I want one more leg here, or one more comp here, so we'll paste in one more, and I'm just going to name this one like comp. So, because instead of dragging all of those down into the main composite, ideally we'll want to put it, and we'll end up setting a backdrop up and all that good stuff down the road. So, we currently have the color art for all of our comps is just going to go through. So we'll look at color art going to each of their respective items. Now I can select all of those, hold down Alt and one click, it joins them together. So that does speed that up a little bit. So our color art is just our color art and it's really, it's the line art where that's where we're working with the line art as we're trying to connect all of these. And that's where we use the auto patch and the cutters because then the line art gets cut by the um, auto patch of each of the other items. So we end up doing our cross cutting as part of it. And the lower leg, because it's hinged on both sides, is going to need an additional comp with it because then it gets cut by the line art of both the foot and the upper leg. So remembering how we set that up. So when we're doing our cross patching, our line art for the lower leg is going to be cut by the auto patch of both the foot and the upper leg. So then we drag that in there and then we can put that into the comp. So each one of these kind of unit comps, a unit being a foot, upper, lower, ends up with two items in it where the line art just goes through a cutter. But th what cuts that is going to be the auto patch. Oh, sorry, not the line art cutting it, my bad. It's the auto patch cutting it. So then the auto patch of the lower leg is going to be cutting the foot. And so we can see the line to our cutters when it goes into the mask port. So we have the art port and the mask port. The mask port has the little mask icon on it. And now we can see the auto patch of the lower leg is cutting the upper leg. So it goes into the mask for that and cuts that. Now the stripe for the leg is going to its line art, of course, is being cut. 
its line art is being cut, we'll drag that into its respective comp. And now the auto patch. So what we're trying to do is hinge that joint right at the ankle of the stripe. So we grab auto patch and that's our cross cutting. So that's our basic cross cut. This is a double cross cut when we have one item cut by both. Otherwise cross and then we have you know cross happening on our auto patches. So those are all set up. We can drag our light comp down here, exit our full screen, and now if I switch to my animation tool and look, we'll see that it's set up except for, as I mentioned, the heel. We're gonna have to fix that. And then on the boot here, we got this little problem. So the joint at the ankle, that looks good there, but it's extending out, and we're gonna have to add in the deformer, put our low cutter on, all that fun stuff. So that's what we will now look at adding into the mix. So I can use a lesser node view and keep this up while I'm working on this. So I'm going to go grab the foot because I want to go find the heel on it. So I'll go into drawing mode for the foot. We'll go on to for the heel and I can now just select this line right here. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go to my overlay layer and then I will paste that in. Now if we take on the foot, we have the overlay layer. Let's just drag this to the foot comp, go back to our camera view, and now we can see that we've restored that heel so it's not being cut by the auto patch. The next thing that I want to do is for the upper stripe. So I want to cut the upper stripe by the shape of the leg. So that means we need one more cutter. So paste that in, we need one more cutter. And I want to cut that whole, oh no, not that one. There we go, this, oh, not into the mask. Here, I want to cut this. So what are we going to cut it with? Well, to cut it, we're going to cut that upper stripe by the lower leg, so let's make a little more room here so I can see what's going on. So we want to grab from the lower leg, I can go grab the auto patch and put that in. And if you'll notice, it did the reverse. So now the stripe is showing where it's not on the leg. One thing about these cutters is cutters can be inverted. So if I click this box here and invert it, you'll see the mask goes from white mask on a black background, invert it, and now it's a black mask on a white background. So now we've added that in. But we'll notice one curious thing happened is now we see that line that we drew for the boot. So once again, just repeating, we invert it. And one way to quickly invert mass is that you can double click on the mask icon and it switches it from a regular to an inverted so you don't have to click on the box and check that. So we just have that white line showing that was present on the boot. And you may be wondering, it's like, well, could we just use the color art to cut it instead? And if I use the color art, it does, the line doesn't show, but we'll now see the color actually goes to the line itself where the line is half one, you know, the thickness of our stroke is half on one side, half on the other. So now we have the outside half, but we're missing the inside half. So that looks like junk. So we don't want to do that. We want to use the auto patch, drag that back over here. And what that tells me is I need to go on the lower leg, go into my drawing view so I can verify I'm there, go into my line. And now I don't need this line here anymore. Now that I have my color in place, I can now just select this line, hit delete. We don't need it because we're not going to use it. Now if we go back to camera and look here, switch to this view, we will see that now it lines up perfect. So we have that set. The next thing that we are going to look at is putting in our deformer so that we're able to adjust that stripe and move it around. We're also gonna set up the stripe with a pivot point, so we'll use a peg on it. So if I were to have a peg on this, 
And if I just grab my animation tool and move it around, we'll see how I can move that stripe across the boot. I don't even have to change it, I can just move it to animate as we're gonna change that view or to adjust it for a pose. So you can see very readily that based on the artwork that we see, like when we look over here, we can see that they probably are doing something similar to this in their original model. But what we want is to be able to adjust the curvature on that. So we are going to set it up so we do have that pivot point so we can work with it, but we also want to be able to change the shape. So the first thing I though is I don't want that cutter on there, so I want to be able to see my artwork in its entirety. And I'm going to also disable that cutter and disable that cutter as well so that we can see all of it for drawing our deformers. So going into drawing the deformers and how it's going to work, it's pretty straightforward. What we have to use is the rigging tool and I'm going to pull up my tool options. Now by default, it has the auto rigging tool so it just guesses what you want. This particular, these shapes I tried using, there is an option under uh, create envelope or envelope creator where it creates a deformer envelope. Sometimes it works great and other times it does not. On this particular shape I tried it did not. So I want to use an envelope deformer so that means I'm going to be drawing a shape around it. So we set that as our option and now I'll choose, in this case, I'll click on the upper shape. So rigging tool is active. I'm going to click on the boot. And the way it works is I'm going to click and drag my way around. Where I start is going to, and I wanna just disable that so I can see all of it. So where I start, it creates kind of a pivot point that it would rotate from and do everything else. Um, so you can kind of decide, because this has corners up here, I don't want it and you'll kind of see how it looks a little different. So I click and drag for my first point, and now I will click and drag back to my starting point. So I'm going to click and drag, and it's always creating, um, so it's creating not corner points, but smooth points, so we will be having to adjust those. So I click and drag back, and I'm always trying to drag about one third the distance. Oh, I totally forgot though. I need a point in the middle to make this easy. So I can just undo, click on the starting point there. So that's where it was. It'll be nice to have a point here in the middle. So if I want to adjust the bend or curve, I can do that. Now I click and drag back, click and drag back, drag back, go to what would be the middle here, click and drag, click and drag, click drag, click drag, click drag, click drag, and then to finish, when you get to the end, you hold down Alt and it changes your cursor, so it puts a little C next to it, and now I click and drag that final point, and now it's a closed path. Now what I need to do is I need to zoom in on it and adjust this so that it follows. The closer you are to the shape of your line artwork while you're doing this. Now this point here, I want to turn this into a corner point, so I can do that by holding down Alter Option, and now you'll see how I can adjust that corner. Otherwise, I'm just adjusting that curvature. Now this time I want to straighten this out, so it's following that as long as I'm here and can see that one. I will repeat that same process, probably could have adjusted this one while I was down here. Shorten that up just a little bit. Now let's just move my way around, pull that point. So we can see how that's being disagreeable because I don't want to go across. I want to hold down Alt, move that over, and now it's able to affect it in both directions. Line this up, hold down Alt or Option, drag it up, click here, slide over. So, whoop, and don't just randomly click off a handle because it will add extra points, which will get a little bit messy while you are working. So once we have this envelope created, 
then we're able to animate it using our transform tool while we're working and it's really really slick so now I have the envelope for my upper stripe created I'm going to save now I'm going to go to my lower stripe hit A to reactivate that layer so A and D are our two commands for working with that and if I click this button next to it it's the show and hide deformers here so if I have something selected with the deformer and then if I click this button it shows the deformer and if I click that button again it goes away there we we'll or if I have something else active and then click on it and it goes away. There we go. All right, so once again, envelope, this layer's active. I'm going to click and drag here and then I click and drag trying to get that shape. And again, I know I'm going to want one in the middle there. I don't think I ever need to curve that, so I'm not gonna add a point in the middle there. And remember, we hold down Alter Option. Oh, it's got to be over the point. Wait till you see the little C next to. So I'll click on that point to say I'm continuing. And when I see the C, I missed. Point is active. There we go. It goes from a crosshair to a circle, indicating it's going to close it. And now I can just adjust my handles. And ideally your handles, again, should be, each handle should be about one third the length of the segment in between points that it's trying to handle. So this should be one third of that line distance right there. And then this is one third, this is about one third, one third, one third. So that gives us the control that we're looking for on it. If I click over here, so I'm no longer on the rigging tool, you'll see it turns green. When we have the rigging tool selected, our envelopes are red, indicating we're modifying them, we're not animating them. Now if I go back to the shape, we'll reactivate that cutter, reactivate that cutter up there. And now, oh, and we have one down here. We need to reconnect. So I'll grab the auto patch of the lower leg, put it in. So it's there. So now, if I go to this upper deformation and select it, it's a show deformer. It shows me the deformer. So what I can do is I can now pull this line down to create that curve. I can pull this line down. I can click and pull that handle down. I can pull this in or out depending on if we need to adjust its overall shape. So this is going to give me the ability to customize the look and feel of this depending on the angle of the boot. So if I click here to see that again, if I want to adjust that curvature maybe you know again staying at this point but then selecting this handle and this handle I can pull those down to create that curve so I have a lot of flexibility while I'm working to create the shape or curve that I need within my animation so it's going to give me the ability to make this look really good and customize it. Now if I hit O on my keyboard we will see that here is my deformation and what it is if we go into that node we'll see it's a whole series of all the curves that I just connected and we can exit out of that node but if I want to clear what I've done I can now just select those keyframes and yeah, clear keyframes and now we're back and it's no longer messed up. So I'm off to a clean start. 
So this is how to start building out our leg rig. Finally, what we will want to do is to not hit play by accident. And we'll turn off the deformer. We don't need to see that. We're going to go back into full screen view. And what I want to do is select these and then uh, control shift P that adds a peg for each one of those control shift P that adds pegs for those and now we need these two to have two more pegs so every item should always have its own peg and now I want to build my hierarchy here so the this is going to be my left leg master and I can connect that over then my lower leg which then I can rename this uh, like lower master and the lower leg should control the upper stripe and I'm going to set the foot up here and then the foot when I move the foot the foot stripe should move with it so now we'll exit full screen and we'll set up our nodes here so we can see a little bit more. So when we have the foot and the stripe, so I'm control clicking to select both of those and I will then grab the advanced animation rotate tool and I'm going to set up my point. But the point I want to use is going to be my pivot point. So we're going to put that layer on top. Just move this over here so we know it goes on top. Reactivate it so we get the circles. And now let's go back and choose those two pegs again. So click on this peg, hold down Command or Control and shift onto that peg. And now this is where having that precise circle. So finding that alignment inside the circle. Now I'm going to choose my lower leg here. So I select those two. Let's zoom out. And with our animation tool we can see there it is. Move that over. Zoom way in. If we make that center circle even smaller, then we just keep zooming in that much more. And for perfectly round joints, when your characters really require that, then you do need to be diligent in connecting those. So now, select those, and these will line up here. So once again, we line up that pivot point. So we're rotating at the center of our circle. We can take our pivots, D to deactivate it. If I go and grab my animation tool here, if we select this, and one thing I just want to point out is I do have peg selection mode active, so it selects it. And while I'm doing this and getting the hang of what's going on, I can see it shows the upper leg here, so if I want to move the up the whole leg, I hit B to move up. So now it selected that peg. So now we can see this leg moves. That's good. So now she has three legs. Kind of looks very we just need to add a crease layer in, which we could add that as an overlay layer on the boot. And maybe even put in a toggle switch so you can toggle it on and off. That would be something we would look at adding after we get our core functionality in place. Now if I select the lower leg here and hit B so we can see we're on the lower leg master, we can bend that, we can break the knee going that other way. So if I hit B again, it goes up. So it's always good to keep your node view up when you're learning how your rig works to make sure that things are lining up correctly. If I click on the foot and if we look here, 
So if we choose the foot, we know it's going to move the stripe with it. So now we can see that as the stripe moved there, that didn't move very nicely, but I can now check the stripe and probably looking at that, we may want to adjust the pivot point of the stripe a little bit um, so that it's not rotating around there. Uh, this is revealing to me that I want the pivot point on the stripe to probably be um, maybe even down at the base of it. So let's undo that. I go to the stripe here and instead of having its pivot point located there, it, I think it's going to make more sense to move it down here. Now of course we could always do a temporary one using the transform tool and adjust it. So now if I rotate the foot here and now I can click on the stripe and relocate the stripe so that it makes more sense that it's adjusting with that. Um, but realistically, if I've rotated the foot here, the foot may, okay, so we have a little more curvature in the ankle there. I guess so it's a, kind of makes sense. It's yeah, where the ankle bone would be sticking out on it. And I would want some creasing or we can go here and rotate this just a little bit so it's not as noticeable that that's happening. And if I need to then go into my deformer, I can now adjust my deformer as well. So I could now click on this point and I could move that over as needed to clean up my view. So we're, we're losing a little bit of heel down here. So that's telling me maybe, and this, I oh, didn't wanna be that. Um, it's telling me that maybe we need to add the whole of the heel so that as we move, want to adjust or move the foot, we may want to break the foot even into a second piece or we could add an additional deformer on the foot so that the foot could bend down or an envelope deformer, a drawing substitution foot. So there's a number of options. Um, but I may want that line to continue up. Depending on how we animate with it, it could just be this is as far as we want the boot to bend because when you're wearing boots, you don't get full flexibility of pointing your toe because you know that looks very broken in the ankle. That's more of how far we would want to go, maybe even just that far. So again, these are the things that we need to try out and start to discover. We may want to add an overlay layer at the knee for the crease. But based on the art here, I think what we're going to be using is a separate layer that's going to be this knee crease that will sit separately from the leg and then you adjust the position or shape of it based on the position of the leg. So good luck. This is really the first part of it to clean up your artwork once you have all of this set up and you're like, okay, that's a lot of parts for one layer. That's just for the leg here. What we can do is you can start grouping things together. So we may want to, instead of having these all laid out with all of their glory is starting to nest it in groups. So we do this cross patching in groups and then we can just have some additional outs where we have like the auto patch coming out separately just so we can use it for the cutter for the stripe. But it's not a bad idea to now take all of these layers here, go to my layer menu, go to insert and choose backdrop. And that now gives me a backdrop for this leg. Click here and this will be my left leg. If I can type correctly. 
and I'm going to just choose a new color so I'm just going to work my way up from the bottom as I add layers just keep moving up from it and the nice part is now I can move that easily as a group and we will have additional groups for our other body parts as we flesh out the whole character. Good luck and happy rigging. In this next part, we're going to work on adding in the crease at the knee. So if we zoom in, we can see we have that there. So what I want to do is I want to add in an element, which is a drawing layer. And I undo that, click on the comp, and now we'll add the element. Um, I'm adding it to the upper leg comp, so that's where we're going to want that to exist on it, and I will rename this knee crease. Now with this selected, I can go into my pen, I'm going to choose my line color, and because I've since relaunched Harmony. Remember that I had my brush at 3.5. I probably should just make a preset so it's easier to get back to that. And I'll make sure I am on my line art layer. Well, I am drawing. And as I'm going to draw this crease, what I want to do with this, the crease is going to be up actually I don't want to use that tool use the line tool and we can just go with our basic line here want a little bit of bend and I'll draw the next part of my line this one we don't need as much bend so that will give the crease that I need. Now I'm going to click and add to my color art and what I want to do is use the stroke tool. And On the stroke tool I am going to create a larger gray so that I'm able to fill this with the pants color on layer so now it creates the basic crease shape. So if we click out and off we'll see we now have that basic crease shape. But what we're missing is on this leg here we'll see where we need to have an additional line and, and we'll use the overlay layer of the leg to accomplish that. So to pull that one off, I'm going to go into the upper leg here, go on to the line art layer, and I'm going to just zoom out so I can see what is going on. I'll switch over into my drawing view, grab line art, actually we'll just click on upper leg, select it. So we've now selected the upper leg line art. Copy that, click on the overlay layer, paste, so we can see line art, overlay art, now we'll go to our contour editor here, and I know that I probably don't need a number of these parts. So we'll just start doing some deleting here. And I don't think I need that. So I think I just want those straight lines. Switch back into my camera view. And now when I'm looking in the camera view, we can see how that line 
is extending beyond where we need it to be. So I want it to be ending right about here. So one way I can do that is I can just, with my contour editor, hold down Command or Control. I can click and add a new point. Now I can just click on that segment and hit Delete. So for the moment, it looks about the same. This overlay isn't showing up yet in our node view, so we need to add that over into our node view. We will be using some groups to organize all of these art layers so that it's not quite as cumbersome to look at, so that we can have a much nicer looking arrangement. Now, if I switch over to my transform tool, we can look and see what is going on with that line here. So let's go on to my drawing, zoom in. So what we want to use is not the contour editor, but our pencil editor. So I can select the end here and I will just choose round. So we can see now it puts in that rounded line. So if we go back to our camera view, we see that it is a better looking line. Now I can zoom in a little bit and see that I want to do a little bit of modification to the line art here with this and I'm going to adjust this so it's not protruding in. If I hold down Alter Option, I can move those handles independently so we can see how that now sits in the line. This one's right on the edge there, so I might just pull that over just a little bit. Just trying to make so that that crease is not so bothersome when we look at it. Now if I do want to shape that line of, we have to just upper like here. So if I do want to do any shaping of this, I certainly could. So if I want to pull these down a little bit, make it a little more pointed, real subtle. I could do that as well. Go back to my contour editor. Oh, contour editor. There we go. I'm just going to pull that up a little bit. I don't want it quite that far into my leg. the transform tool and we can see we now have our knee crease that we'll be able to work with. So we're off to a good start and if I grab this knee crease here and nudge it forward or back in space we can make that overlay line show or disappear. But what we do need to do is we do want to add a peg to this so that we can control it. So if we need to do anything specific to it, so we can move it around so it has a peg. I'm going to set its pivot point just equal to the bottom. We may end up needing to add a deformer to it as well. Now we do want this crease here to move with the upper leg, so I'm going to attach it to the upper leg pivot point and in doing so if I now grab the upper leg or the whole leg it's going to move with it so it's not going to be just floating around. The final thing that I want to do is to make this a little bit easier to get a hold of. So anytime we have these small kind of decorative features that we need to move around in it's sometimes hard to click on them on the body we used to make handles and Harmony 24 introduced a new feature in it and this new feature for working on handles is going to be our OGL controller. So it's our OpenGL controller. 
And when we have an OpenGL controller node, what's super fun about this is the OpenGL controller node gives us that handle. So we don't have to make a layer of artwork to work with. We don't have to then put a visibility node in to make it so it shows up in OpenGL but not in our render view. So it simplifies a lot of our tasks while we are working. So uh, we'll probably want to have an OpenGL controller comp that we're putting all of these onto. So this is just the leg comp. And this is my main comp. I probably should have a character comp in between. So I'm going to just make a composite here. And typing issues there so this will be my OGL comp. I'm going to put that in and we'll just run this down into it and we'll just stick that onto our main comp. So the OpenGL when we look at what it is if we look at our options we have a couple of different things to work with. So we have our controller and we can change the shape and size of this controller. So I'm going to, in this case, use a triangle because the triangle kind of matches the knee shape that I'm working with. And we can also use custom shapes. So I could make a element layer or a drawing layer and that attach that into this OGL controller into the blue port over here. And then that will become the shape that we're using. But we're not going to worry about that at this moment. But what we do is we take our object here and we put it into the controller position. So now if I use my transform tool and move the controller around, we can see that the knee moves or the knee crease moves with that controller. Now the controller is poorly placed at the moment and we can type in X and Y positions for it or I can click on setup mode and now I can just relocate this to where I want it to go. And I feel like that's too big for what I want, so I'm going to just go down to a 0.3 with it. That's still big enough that I can get a hold of and access it. Now I can turn off setup mode. So now, once again, if I just grab this, we can see how it selects and allows me to move that object around. So this is useful when you have objects that are like partially hidden, like eyelids or um, asymmetrical features that you need to move around on, say, the face or on a shirt, it makes it easier to grab them and move them. So these controllers are, where we used to use handles, are super handy. Now, I'm not going to worry about our selection node here. Label is super awesome because I can just go knee crease like that. And now we can see I put in the knee crease. It's kind of big, so I'm going to put that down to six point type. And I'm going to modify, I can just mod type in a value there, or I can pull my slider down to make that gray just a little bit less on it. And if I, we can see it's 0.8 north, so it's moving up. So if I want it a little closer, I'll go like 0.6 and we can move it down. So that now tells me what this diamond refers to, it gives me access to it, and allows me to control it in a super handy manner. So I, once again, I can just click here and use that to adjust it, which is useful because I may be trying to click on it and instead I'm, I select this part of the leg or this part of the leg and you're like, ah, oh, that's not what I wanted. So using these controllers is going to make life just a lot easier. And the fact that now if I go into my render view, switch over, we can see that that disappears. It's no longer there in the render view. And that's where these OGL controllers are going to be so handy as our rig becomes more and more uh, complex. So short one.
but a super useful little um, tip to add in that knee crease. So we used an overlay layer with it. I'll move the cutter over so we can see what's happening there. Added in the knee crease. It sits on top of the line art. It sits below the overlay layer as a default. But if we need to adjust its position, I can just click on it right here. And then while in the camera view, nudge it forward using Alt Option and the down arrow to pull it closer to the camera and push the up arrow to push it further away from the camera. If I look at my coordinate view, we can see this is my Z value. So when I am doing that nudging, we can see how now I nudged it forward too. And now I'm at zero. And when everything is at a Z value of zero, we are going to be aligned on our Z axis based on the order of the cables in our composites. So I hope that helps and have fun rigging.